Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ is my call sign. Sunny Worthing on the Sussex coast, raining today. Today I want to talk about setting up uh, your transceiver, your SWR meter and your aerial tuning unit. Okay, because there seems to be some confusion about this. Which way round things go, you know, does the SWR meter go there or there, the ATU there. So I'm going to get the blackboard out, that'll frighten you. <laughs> and just show you basically how to set it up and how to adjust the aerial tuning unit. Um, now bear in mind there are different aerial tuning units, they all differ. Uh, you might have various controls on it, you've probably got a book with it, some sort of manual that tells you what to do anyway. Uh, same with the SWR meter. Um, but this is basically how to set it all up. And what we're going to do is set this up on 80 metres. Okay, the 80 metre amateur band. Um, right, let's have a look at the, the video I've made with the blackboard. Okay, don't get frightened. It's all pretty basic stuff. What we have here, this is your transceiver. All right, your Kenwood, Icon, Yesu, whatever it is you've got. That's your HF transceiver. On the back of it is a, a socket, SO239 socket. So you want a piece of 50 ohm coax. PL259 plug on each end, out of there, into here, into your SWR meter, okay? Same here, out of the SWR meter, into your ATU. This is the way you do it, right? You don't, some people swap these round, that's no good, that's a mistake. So 50 ohm coax between there and there, 50 ohm coax between there and there. This is your aerial, we're just going to say it's an end fed aerial, okay? Just end fed, like that. Have an earth, you need some sort of earth system in the garden, radials or whatever you've got out there, some sort of earth. What you can do is join, this is what I do, I join that to that and that to that with a piece of earth wire, just so I'm not relying on the coax. But uh, that's not important at this stage. Okay, we're now receiving. Adjust the ATU controls for maximum noise in the receiver. That, that gets this somewhere close to where we want to be, all right? So you tune this up for maximum noise in the receiver. You switch that to forward. It'll have a forward reflected or whatever your particular one says, forward or reverse, forward reflected. Stick it on forward. Put this on CW, lowest power. Find a spot on 80 meters where it's quiet. You want it on CW because you want just a steady carrier, okay? If you start talking or some people whistle into it and all this sort of thing, the meter, you know, the meter on here will be all over the place. So you want a nice lowest power possible, say five watts, steady CW, uh, just the carrier. You then adjust this for full reading, all right? There's a control on here, isn't there? And you adjust that for full reading, exactly there, all right? So that's on very lowest power it'll do. CW, so you've got a carrier wave. This is set to forward, and you adjust that so it's exactly on the full scale, like that. Right, put this now on reflected, all right, on the, on the control on the front, on reflected. Don't touch the other one that we've set. Put your carrier out again, and adjust this. So this, I don't know where it might be. It might be halfway up, it still might be up here. Adjust the ATU so that this is down there, one to one. Okay, right the way down. Okay. When you've done that, the ATU is set for that particular frequency. All right, if, you, if you're on, I don't know, say you're on 3.575 megs. Okay, you've now set this up for that. If you want to change frequency, you will find you have to readjust this because this, the SWR will start to rise as you go off frequency somewhere else on 80 meters. So you just put the carrier out again on low power and adjust the ATU for that minimum reading there. If you're using a balanced line, like 300 ohm ribbon, something like that here, okay, balanced up to say a dipole, a doublet like that, okay, you will connect this to your ATU. There'll be two terminals for a balanced aerial. You'll have to check on whichever ATU you've got to see. I mean, yours might not take balanced. I don't know. It depends what you've got, but I'm assuming it does. So you connect those there, okay? And it's exactly the same procedure as we did before. The only thing is, with a balanced aerial like that, you don't necessarily need an earth, but I would always earth this anyway, because uh, and these, join these, 
ground that, do all the grounding like that, no matter what aerial you use. Um, so it's, that's it, it's the same procedure, no matter what aerial you're using. Now, this is bad. I know a lot of people do this, but it is incorrect. They'll have the setup as we've already done, transceiver, SWR meter, ATU, right, coax, coax. They then run coax from here, all the way down the garden, okay, and they will earth the braid there, and the center they will take to their aerial, whether it be a vertical uh, uh, end fed wire or whatever. Okay, that is the way that some people will set it up, and that is completely wrong. I'll tell you why. 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms, right? This will match whatever is here to the transceiver, 50 ohms all the way through. If you put coax on here, this is 50 ohms, you have got no way of matching this aerial, let's say this is 2000 ohms, to 50 ohm coax here. You have no way of matching that to that. It's no good trying to match that to that up here. That won't work. If you want to run coax down the garden, this is what you've got to do. I've just moved that camera around a bit so you can see. You will have to have the ATU down the garden at the aerial feed point. All right? <laughs> and that, well, that ideally wants to be here so you can see it when you're adjusting this. If you change frequency slightly here, so you go from 3757 or whatever it was, just change frequency slightly, you've got to go down the garden and readjust the ATU. This is where automatic ATUs come in. Have an automatic one here and it'll do all this for you. Then you can run coax down the garden. Okay, but that, if this is a manual ATU, this is the way to do it. If you want to have the feed point of the aerial down the garden, you cannot have it the way it was just now. You cannot have the ATU here and then coax all the way down as I showed you just now. Okay, I know a lot of people do that and they say, oh, well, it works. Yes, you will get some sort of reception and some sort of transmission. You will get a, probably a pretty good SWR into the radio here. So this will see 50 ohms. But the mismatch here on, you know, on the old drawing, the mismatch will be horrendous. You know, the coax is looking for 50 ohms. If you go back to this, there's nothing to match it. 50 ohms to say 1000 ohms, whatever, 500 ohms. There's nothing here to match that connection. Huge mismatch there. Look at having the ATU up here somewhere. By the way, a, a, there's balanced and unbalanced aerials. Unbalanced is just a, an end fed wire, okay? It's unbalanced. A dipole with your two sections, that's called balanced, or a doublet, that's balanced. All right, and you feed that with balanced feeder. You can feed a dipole with coax. That's another issue. We won't go into that now. You can have a dipole fed with coax, which will work on just one frequency. Sorry, that's the local 70 centimetres repeater in Worthing firing up. Uh, yeah, I'll cover that in another video. I don't want to confuse everything. So basically, this video is about setting up your HF transceiver, your SWR meter, aerial tuning unit and and the connections to your aerial okay so it's all you know, once you know how it's like anything isn't it when you know how it's easy peasy there we are i hope that's explained everything i hope you enjoyed the video look out for the next one bye bye for now